بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم سورا البکرا چیپٹر ٹو اینڈ وی ول کور ٹو ورسز دا بک وچ پرووائڈ گائیڈنس فار بیکمنگ متقی اینڈ دیز آر دا ریفرنسز ان دس پریزنٹیشن آئی ہیو یوز سم ایکسٹریکٹ فرام دا بک آف ڈیسٹنی ایز ویل بائی پرویز دس از آر کانٹیکٹ اینڈ ایف دیر از اینی کویری آر کویسچن ریگارڈنگ دس پریزنٹیشن آر اینی آف آر پریویس پریزنٹیشن پلیز use this number recap of previous presentation where we covered the last verse of surah al-fatiha in previous verses the quran has presented before us the conceptual framework of the divine program which is to be carried out by jamaat e mu'minin after drawing their attention to the importance of transforming their psyche willingly and asking them to create the desire for the straight path The Quran refers to the practical aspects of this straight path by referring to human history. If we remember, few supplications were taught in Surah Al-Fatiha, particularly about Sirat-e-Mustaqeem. In order to tread on this straight path, look at human history. Some examples are also quoted. And then create the desire and need to follow the path of those who were blessed with the bounties of Allah as a consequence of following this path defined by the wahi of Allah. As long as these people obeyed the laws of Allah, they benefited from the nema of Allah. And nema over here means Allah's bounties, blessings. In fact, these include all aspects of uh, physical body as well as of human self. Then the Quran warns us that these nema are associated with obeying his laws. And those nations which did not adhere to the guidance of Allah not only went astray but ultimately became destroyed and disappeared into oblivion forever. Because the nations which go down by when they go against the laws of Allah, they seldom rise again unless people put their head together and then start working on Allah's laws and get the successes back. But Normally, the time period is so long that those generations disappear and new generations arrive in the world and they are the ones then who come back and rise again. We can easily relate these two aspects with the world of 2024. In this world, there is no nation which possesses those nema which are referred to in this verse. And that is important. I put down this comment because sometimes our mind goes towards the physical sustenance side of human life. We think that even if we do not follow the values of the Quran, we do get some advantages in the physical world and some conveniences of life. But those are not called nema in the light of the Quran. Nema are those who, which are for the benefit of whole of mankind and should also include human self-development. An overview of today's presentation. This surah begins with three letters, Alif, Lam, Meem, which are acronyms for Allah, Aleem, Hakim, decrees all that which is put forward for the guidance of mankind. It is in response to the supplications highlighted in Surah Al-Fatiha. And we will go through these, these three letters in our following slides. This is the book, the Quran, which will provide guidance to all those who are looking for it in this finite life of theirs. The book contains all the knowledge which is required by the human intellect for it to navigate through the maze of earthly life. And it also explains the rationales and reasoning behind all its directions, commands, values, and attributes. Doubts and uncertainties do arise in the human mind during the earthly stay, and this book will address all issues related to the human psyche as it is from Allah who is Aleem and Hakim. This book serves as a guidance for those who wish to become muttaqeen and wish to avoid the dangerous alleys of worldly life. Only the Quran can help to avoid these dangerous paths and guide on sirat e mustaqeem So we will go through these terms of muttaqeen as well as the initial uh, acronyms used in, in the verse and also we will go through the aspects of doubt and uncertainty. Now let us go through these two verses first. Response to the supplications noted in Surah Al-Fatiha. 
alif lam mim that is the first verse and then zalik al kitab la rai ba fihi hudal lil muttaqin it is the proclamation of allah alim and hakim that the guidance which you desire is preserved in this code of laws in which there is neither uncertainty and conjecture nor any psychological complexity this code of laws delineates the path of life to the intended destination of humanity for those people who wish to avoid the dangers of the wrong paths and over here alim will mean all knowing and hakim will mean all wise and this will come up in following slides now few reflections on surah al fatiha which are related to human psyche we went through a number of important aspects relating to the human psyche towards which allah has drawn our attention in previous verses the way these verses are presented in surah al fatiha they assume that the person is looking for guidance and is serious in his pursuit to find a higher purpose of life If this is not the condition of the individual then these verses mean nothing as we witness in the domain of religious sectarian versions of Islam since Allah has created the human psyche and is fully aware of its latent potentials hence those who are looking for guidance are informed about some of the divine attributes with reference to the importance of rububiyat and the system of deen and that is an important point because when we look at the world around us we forget that our own thinking through which we are making sense in the we are making sense of the world around us and giving it meanings this is also given to us free by allah so we should also concentrate on our own psyche on our own inner world where we are where thought process is taking place recognizing that human desires and needs play an important role in worldly life the quran attempts to guide us on this aspect by noting a few important supplications at the outset and that is an interesting point that while we are going through al fatiha we should keep it in mind that these supplications these duas are taught by allah himself and there is a specific purpose behind it because these relate to changing our psyche and we cannot change our psyche unless we pay attention to these supplications and their content if these find a place in our consciousness then we have essentially stepped on the ladder called the divine program of deen this is not something we should go through as a ritual customarily that okay i have gone through surah al fatiha which is done under the domain of uh, religion we have to pay attention to it so that it brings a change within our own psyche and then we will understand what rest of the quran means what it has for the human world having occupied our psyche with these thoughts we now move to surah al baqarah to be introduced to the finer details of the system of deen now over here what i have done is i have drawn a small schematic and looked at what are the contents of human minds under two different domains now here is the brain human brain and the body psyche required under man made systems define success in the world based on material conveniences of life and quran has said over here alamu anna mal hayatu dunya laibun wa lahwun wa zinatun wa tafakhurun bainakum wa takasurun fil amwal wal aulad i have only used the first part of the verse know you that the life of this world is but play and amusement pomp and mutual boasting and multiplying among yourselves riches and progeny that people have people think that these are the things which give them success and quran says that do not do not focus your attention on these kind of successes these are just means to get through this life the consequence of living life assuming it will end with physical death and this is the problem human beings have without the guidance of the quran that they think that the life will end with death and that is the way they live their life getting help from surah al fatiha and over here what i have done i have put the same picture over here that the same brain if it changes if it accepts all the supplications given in surah al fatiha and then gets on to the path of sirat al mustaqim what happens looking for a higher purpose in life come to the quran with a view to finding an alternative to man made systems continue to earn a living under the existing man made systems 
So living under the man-made system means that these things are important, which are quoted in the first part. But we have to look at the level of human self. Replace the contents of the mind with the contents of the supplications put forward by Allah. Change the path of life to sirat e mustaqim So if we are approaching Surah Al-Fatiha with this in mind, then once we reach the Surah Al-Fatiha, we should change our outlook. We should change our vision. We should start looking that how to develop our own self so that the man-made system can be replaced and we do create a better world for ourselves. And this is what Quran says, an amta alayhim. This is the path of those on whom Allah bestowed his blessings and bounties. And obviously these blessings and bounties can only come through the guidance of the Quran. And over here I have quoted another verse. And translation is the things which you are given are but conveniences of this life and the glitter thereof. Very important. Mata means that when we go out on some journey, we take limited means of sustenance with us. We do not take everything with us which creates extra burden and it will slow us down on the path of life. So this is what Quran is saying, that if you change your outlook, then you will understand the reality of your own existence. Because this world is a temporary abode. It is the first stage of self-development. And Zina Toha, that don't get attracted by these things and think that this is what is life. These successes, material successes are life. These are important, but only as a means of sustenance to get through the journey of life. And the next part is beautiful. But that which is with Allah is better and more enduring. Bama in dallahi khairun wa abka. Khair means good, which helps to develop ourselves. And abka is something which is eternal, which will remain, which will endure, which means that it will go on to the next life. Will you not use your, your intellect and Quran says Afala Taqilun whenever Quran Quran puts a lot of emphasis on using our rational side and reasoning? And what it means is that our intellect should tell our intellect that pay attention to these things and see the evidence of it around you and then see how the Quran guides you onto the right path. Now acronyms which are called Mukattat. This surah gets its name from the mention of Al-Baqarah in verse 270, which is translated as Haifar. And this aspect will be covered later on once we reach these verses 67 to 71. This aspect is covered in relation to Bani Israel in verses. And you remember the Haifar issue comes up where they were asked to sacrifice the Haifar and Bani Israel did not wish to do that. Verse 2, 1, Alif, Lam, Meem, in the beginning of this surah and some other surahs, these kinds of letters of the alphabet appear which cannot be called words. Though every word is in fact a compilation of letters in the Arabic language, the root of every word is in the letters. But it is letters that join together to make a word and the word provides this assigned meanings. But these letters which appear like this on some of the surahs which have been noted above do not form words. So it is not word alam. They remain merely as letters and they are also read as individual letters. That is A-L-M. That is the English equivalent. Will not be read as alam. Alam means pain. And uh, this is a root which is used in Azab and Alim. It will be read separately as Alif Lam Meem. As individual letters, these are termed as Mukattaat, i.e. letters which are cut off. Now continuing on this, in the English language, that which are called abbreviations are letters taken from different words which are written and read separately. For example, we are aware of these, some of the acronyms used in English language. For example, RSV, PPS, EG, also IE, and number of others. This was customary among Arabs as well. And not only among Arabs, this is also found in the Hebrew language. Since the Quran was revealed in the Arabic language, therefore the same style of explanation has been adopted here as well. Though this is another matter that this style of the Quran is in itself extraordinary. In following their style of expression, some muqattat of words have appeared in the Quran. 
Since this style was commonplace among them, it is nowhere to be found in the Quran that they ever questioned what is the purpose of these abbreviations. They knew what this meant. Because a number of questions have been asked by the opponents of the Quran that what does this mean or what does that word mean? But over here, nobody has ever asked about these muqattaat. So that means Arabs at that time knew it because they, their language at that time had a lot of poetry. And poetry, these kind of words possibly can be used to express some of the message they wish to convey. These are letters taken from words barring a few relating to the being of Allah or his attributes. Allah Smaul Husna, that is divine attributes. For example, in Alif Lam Meem, Alif is for Allah, Lam is for Alim, that is he is all knowing, and Meem is for Hakim, all wise. So what it means is, but if we take these interpretations, that means what is being covered in this surah will cover the knowledge side as well as the wisdom side for us as human beings from Allah's direction. And obviously, if we follow it, then we will also become knowledgeable and we will also become wise. It is not essential for these that they should be the very first letters of these words. For ascertaining their meaning, any letters from these words can be taken. The Quran has also made provision for the aesthetic proclivities of man from the aspect of fanatics. Because it sounds nice, Alif Lam Meme and then the next verses, Muttaqeen and Alimun Akeem, that in the selection of these letters, this aspect has also been catered for. Continuing with few more comments, from this aspect, the meaning of Alif Lam Meem will be Allah, all-knowing, all-wise has decreed. Few more examples of this from the Quran. So what I've done is I've quoted here few more just to illustrate this point. For example, in verse 7, 1, Alif Lam Meem Saad, Allah, all-knowing, all-wise and all-seeing, that is Basir, decrees that. Another verse is Surah Yunus, first verse, Alif Lam Ra Tilka Ayatul Kitabil Hakim. Allah, all knowing and all sustaining and nourishing, has decreed that these are the verses of that code of laws which is completely based on Hikmat. So over here, Lam will be related to Alim and Ra will be related to Rahim. Another verse from Surah Rad, first verse, Alif Lam Meem Ra Tilkal Ayatul Kitabe Wallazi Unzila Alaika Min Rabbekal Hakko Walla Kinna Aksara Nase La Yuminun. Allah, all knowing, all wise, and all sustaining and nourishing, has stated that these are verses of the book which have been revealed on you from your Rabb as Hak. But most men do not accept Iman. Now, the next term which comes in uh, in the second verse is Al-Kitab, explaining Al-Kitab. If you remember, it says, Zalik Al-Kitab la raiba fi hai. So over here, we will go through this term Al-Kitab. The Quran has proclaimed itself as being Al-Kitab. The root of this word is this, whose basic meanings are to give a command or to declare something as essential. For example, it is stated in the Quran, Ya yuhallazina amanu kotiba alaykum usseyamu. Kotiba over here that fasting or siyam is prescribed to you. Another verse is, Kotiba alaykumul kitalu. Fighting according to need is pres prescribed upon you. So Kotiba over here will mean that it is decreed, it is prescribed, you are commanded to do it. It should be made clear that when a decree or command is eternal and immutable, it is declared to be a law. The commandments which have been revealed in the Quran are both eternal and immutable. This is why they are called laws in general terminology. Though the word law itself does not appear in the Quran, and which means kanun. The word kanun doesn't appear anywhere in the Quran. The Quran has used the word kitab instead with these very meanings. For example, in Surah An-Nisa, firstly it is described in detail which relations are haram for you according to Allah's law. And after that it is declared, kitab Allah alaikum. This is the law of Allah for you. And we can look at the verses around this and this will become very clear. 
Next is the Quran was in the form of the book during the time of the last messenger. There is some controversy again among various sectarian forms of uh, Islam as a religion where they say that Quran was not put together as a book during the time of the messenger. And, and this is refuted by the Quran because Quran is very clear when it says it is Al-Kitab, it means the book which has been put together during the time of the messenger himself. In the same way it is stated about the Quran itself, Fiha Kutubun Kayyimatun. There are well established laws in it. Among Arabs, when dispersed parchments were amalgamated, then at that time it would be called a book. And since dispersed ideas are preserved by writing these down in one place, that is why the meaning of Kataba is he wrote. Therefore, Kitab was the name given to those written pages which were compiled together. Allah declares about the Quran. وَكِتَابٍ مَسْتُورٍ فِرَكٍ مَنْشُورٍ By a book inscribed in a scroll unfolded. So, Kitab will be noun and Al-Kitab then will be the Quran, that is the book. Arabs used to remove the skin of a deer and convert it into a form of parchment. This was called Rika. Those writings which were meant to be preserved were written on them and when these written parchments were amalgamated, then it was called a book. As far as the scribes of Wahi are concerned, there is evidence available within the Quran itself that they were very honorable and trustworthy. It is obvious from this that the Quran was a book written and compiled on parchments of Rika in Rasulullah's own time. So book was put together, that is the Quran was put together as a book during the era of the messenger himself. It was not that it was not compiled and it was put together after his death. That is not the case. Now, next slide is, this is the book, i.e. the book you are about to read further. After Surah Al-Fatiha, it is called a book from the very beginning. In fact, it is Kitabun, meaning it is Maktubun. That is something which is written down and put together. This is a noun for those things which are written down. And the wisdom in referring to it as this is the book is that Rasulullah had only given the direction to write the Quran down. There was no command to write down anything other than the Quran. Therefore, the meaning of Zalik al-Kitabu is you had called out to us, that is during Surah Al-Fatiha, and said that you wish to be guided towards that straight and balanced path which could take you to the intended destination. You will obtain this guidance in this book. So the Surah Al-Baqarah is an answer, response of Allah to Surah Al-Fatiha where we wish to follow Surah Al-Mustaqeem. By calling it Al-Kitab, it has been made distinct. So Al is definite article. It has been made distinct and distinguished from all other books of the world and by this is meant Al-Quran. Now expanding the aspect of Kitab further. In the basic meanings of the root, that is K-T-B, from which the word kitab is derived, law or whatever is made mandatory on someone as per law, are also included. This word has appeared at numerous places in the Quran with these same meanings. For example, in Surah An nisa after listing those relationships with whom nikah is haram, it is stated, Translated as the command or hukum of Allah is upon you, i.e. according to him, here the meaning of kitab is that of a command. The word kanun or the law does not appear anywhere in the Quran. The word hukum generally appears in its place. The meaning of hukum is that of decision and the decision or hukum which is permanent and immutable is called law or kanun. Now, we are going through this detail because if we are clear about this, then there is no confusion in this word appearing later on. And uh, of course, wherever other verses will appear, we will go in the importance of that word at that point as well. But it is better that we should be very clear because sometimes people confuse it that Quran is, if Quran is called Al-Kitab, then it is some, somewhat different from the Quran. This decision of the government that traffic should flow on the left side is called a national law because this command is not for one time only. It is permanent and is across the board. In the same way, this decision of Allah that fire provides heat is not a temporary decision. It is permanent and immutable. That is why it has acquired the form of a law. 
This is the same position of the Quranic commands because they are both permanent and immutable. So we should be very clear through these slides that Al-Kitab noted in the Quran in this verse is the Quran. And it is taken from the book of destiny. More verses on Kitab. Salat is a duty for Mu'mineen at an appointed time. Again, the same root is used over here. Qasas has been declared a duty on you. In Surah Nisa, it is stated regarding orphan females that you not that you do not give them whatever is defined for them according to the law. In Surah Ambiya, it is stated we had noted this, that is the Kitab in the Zabur, after ethical instructions that the inheritors of the land will be those servants who will possess the ability to inherit the land. The meaning of Kitab here is very clear. The law of Allah is that power in the land that is the government is acquired by that nation which possesses the potential to manage worldly affairs. If a state is acquired on the basis of ability, then that will be in accordance with the law of Allah. If it is acquired by deceit or is just obtained by some incompetent nation, then that will be against the law of Allah. And this is also taken from the Book of Destiny. Two more aspects in relation to Kitab. The scroll of deeds of nations is also termed as their book. Every nation will be called towards this scroll of deeds and it will be said to them that whatever you used to do, today you will reap its recompense. It is obvious that all this take place according to the law of requital of Allah. Allah himself has termed this as his own book. Whatever our book states against you is haq. And that is important that Quran being the book, and uh, we know that even all the books written by human beings, unless we go through them, study them, we cannot benefit from those books. And same is applicable to the Quran. In fact, this is a book of laws, values and attributes of Allah. So we have to go through them line by line and also to be able to refer to it as and when required in relation to solving any human problem. It is stated in Surah Al-Anam that whatever is on the land and water, Allah has knowledge of it. Every leaf which falls from a tree, Allah knows about it. Whatever seed there is in the darknesses of the earth, even invisible, green or withered, whatever is there, it is all included in a kitab mubin That is, this is something which is related to natural laws of Allah and that is also a kitab. Of course, it is an open book for human beings to discover it. And the Quran, of course, deals with the human self-development. Obviously, here the meaning of kitab e mubin is the book of nature. In other words, the laws about the things which are dispersed throughout the external universe are called the laws of nature. Now, verse 3, 7 of Surah Al Imran will be dealt in detail when we will come to it. And there are terms used over here, for example, Ummul Kitab, and best is that we will deal with them as and when we arrive at Surah Al Imran. And this is also taken from the Book of Destiny. Now, the next term which comes in this verse is Raib. And we will explain this. The first characteristic of this book is informed to be that there is no raib of any kind in it. Raib is commonly translated as doubt or shak. But shak itself is an Arabic word and the Quran has used this also. In fact, at one place it has stated shakin murib, that is in suspicious doubt. So it is more than shak and this will become clear subsequently. But it is vital to find out what the difference is between shak and raib and why did the Quran use the word raib in this verse. Every language of the word contains synonyms, i.e. such words which have similar meanings. As far as the number of syn synonyms is concerned, no other language in the word can compete with the Arabic language. But despite this abundance of synonyms, there are no two words in this language whose meanings are exactly the same. Because there are different shades of meanings with these words. So if we have to be careful when we are using synonyms from the Arabic language. There is always a fine difference in the meanings of these synonyms and at times this fine difference later assumes great importance. Because these deal with the human psyche and what is given in the Quran, we, if we want to learn more, then we have to be very careful in drawing the correct context and particularly in relation to the system of deen and 
in relation to the human self-development. And this is taken from the meanings of the Quran, Volume 1. Raib and Shak, the difference. The correct meanings of the synonyms which the Quran has used can only be understood when we bear in mind this fine difference in meaning. The difference between Raib and Shak can be understood through the following example. An individual tells you that I have seen a line on the ground at a certain place from which it appears that it is the outline of a snake. You say that I have a shock about this, a snake cannot be in that place. You will note that this shock or doubt is related to your mind, nothing more than this. On the other hand, in the darkness of night, you become aware of a rustling noise in your room from which a shock arises in your mind that this may be a snake. It is obvious that you will become apprehensive as a result and until this shock of yours is not dispelled, you cannot sleep in peace. So there is a difference between the two. When that doubt is related to our own psyche, when it is creating a certain kind of fear, then it becomes raib. For this kind of shock, the word raib is used, i.e. such a shock as a result of which a psychological predicament and inner anguish is triggered, due to which unease is created in your heart. We are doubtful about many things in our life, particularly if we look at, listen to media and we find certain things which we feel that these are doubtful and we move on. But when these doubtful things or uncertainties are related to our own life, then these become ripe because these create a certain type of effect within our own psyche. In other words, the effect of the word shock is confined to your mind and observation and the consequence of raib causes distress to the heart over and above the mental shock. And that is important because Quran is the one which addresses the issues of human psyche. And this is also taken from the meanings of the Quran, Volume 1. Further elaboration of raib. The word raib has been used in Surah Toba in such a way that this meaning of it becomes clearly evident. And we should go through the, some of these verses. These are very instructive. The hypocrites, that is Munafiqeen, constructed a mosque in Medina. From this, the intention in their hearts was actually to create dissension among Muslims. But outwardly, they profess that this is constructed to the cause of Allah. Because human beings can hide their true intentions. They can mean one thing in their heart and they say something different from their lips. Allah's way he tore apart the veil of this hypocrisy that is manafqat of theirs and Rasulullah was instructed to not even step into this mosque. What the state of the hearts of these hypocrites would have been from this is obvious. Describing this, the Quran has declared the foundation of those who so build this mosque is never free from suspicion and shakiness. And the word used over there is raibatun, in their hearts, until their hearts are cut to pieces. Because everything affects human psyche and if we do something negative deliberately and knowingly, then that is going to leave a mark on our psyche and if we do too many things, then obviously it will affect our psyche on a long-term basis. In other words, this building which they have constructed will continue to remain as a cause for the chastisement of their hearts and this is what Raib is, until their hearts are shattered into pieces. From this, the meaning of raib becomes clear. Hence, when it is said about Allah's book that there is no raib in it, la raib afihe, its meaning will be that there is nothing in it which is doubtful and uncertain. And that is the beauty of the Quran. And we should try to keep it in our mind and become convinced that what we are going to follow subsequently, that is for our own benefit. As I always give an example, the moment we take paracetamol, our headache disappears. So when this instruction, this guidance finds place in our head, in our mind, and we fully come to grips with it, then many of our psychological issues will gradually disappear. From it, all those doubts and suspicions arising in the human mind, which are caused due to not possessing correct knowledge of the facts, will be removed. And along with this, those psychological distresses and torments of the heart will also be alleviated, which are created by these doubts. And the plural of this is, plural of shak is shakuk, from which the human heart becomes influenced. Because everything which goes on in the human world, especially under the man-made system, these create fear and uncertainty. 
both mental peace and contentment of the heart will be achieved from this book because then we will start understanding that this is how this system is functioning and we will also be reassured that we know the details of the system of deen which can replace this system and we are working for that with others and that gives us more certainty and more assurance now next term which comes in this verse is hudallil muttaqin after stating the fundamental characteristic that is la raiba fihi of this great book its cardinal objective is stated to be hudallil muttaqin that it is guidance for those who wish to become muttaqi and we will go through this term muttaqi later the meaning of the guidance hidayat has been explained in surah al fatiha as was stated there its meanings are of such a guidance which emerges and becomes manifestly clear before us and this is not something vague something doubtful the guidance which is given in the quran is very clear crisp to the point and concise and the moment we start following it first the changes which come within our own self indicate to us that what we have become we could not have become without the help of the quran because in terms of understanding even we will know those things which we were never aware of it and when we compare our thought process with those who are not following the quran the difference will become starkly clear it was also clarified there that the need for guidance only arises for the one who feels this need or can only benefit the one who decides to go to some place and for which he is then willing to embark on a journey so it is not about just remembering the verses and going over them every day it will not give us any benefit the benefit only be when we need the guidance and we try to understand it and then follow it individually as well as join up with those who are also willing to follow this path what benefit can guidance give to the one who does not even wish to go anywhere and that is important that if we are happy with the man made system and being its beneficiary we find nothing wrong with it then essentially quran is not for us we can study it academically and for fun sake or for passing time or for even satisfying our emotions under the domain of religion but deen will not emerge out of it only the one who possesses the desire to set out on a journey which will benefit from this but for a journey there is another precaution required and its explanation is given by the word muttaqin now continuing with this term hudallil muttaqin taqwa and muttaqin are very comprehensive terms of the quran now there are no equivalents of these terms it is muttaqin can sometimes is translated as righteous people or righteousness for example taqwa can be be translated as righteousness but that is not really the correct meaning because these terms since deal with the human psyche and the change which takes place within us the, so these have to be explained by knowing the root the root of these words is given over here whose basic meaning can be understood through an example the garments of the arabs are very loose and quite wide and long one of them acquired what is it that is known as taqwa in reply it was said that when you have to pass along such a path which has thorny bushes on both sides how will you negotiate this passage he said that i will gather my garment sometimes on one side so that it does not become entangled in some bush and sometimes on the other side and in this way protecting myself from these thorny bushes will advance safely through this passage he was told that this is what is termed as taqwa hence the basic meaning of this root is to protect something saving it from harmful and troublesome things and to meticulously observe correct measures for this purpose these thorny bushes refer to the problems of life challenges of life which we face particularly under man made system so what is it what it means is that we have to get ourselves ready to negotiate through the paths of life therefore muttaqin will be those travelers who hold fast to the desire and determination to reach their destination whilst keeping themselves protected from the hazards of their journey because if we are consumed by hazards of this journey and of course we are worried about it and all the time concerned about it and fearful of it then we cannot bring best out of us 
if we are all the time worried about our job or death about the problems of life and do not know how to deal with those then obviously our best cannot come out in this life and that is why quran says that you should work for the system of deen and you will see that all these problems related to human psyche within the man made system these will disappear and obviously those who are who wish to establish this system particularly the pioneers they have to not only go through the problems of the man made system but they have to also learn the quran come together and then work together on this path human life is meant to be challenging and the self develops by facing these challenges using the permanent values of the quran i e its guidance so we should not worry about these challenges because these challenges are challenges are meant to be the quran is very clear it tells us that under the man made system these kind of challenges you will face under the system of deen these kind of challenges will emerge before you but you will still be confronted by the man made system illustrating through an example hence the first condition to obtain benefit from this great book will be that man should wish to travel on the paths of life practically because if we do not want to travel on the path which is defined by the quran then literally quran is not for us we cannot get any benefit from a book whose contents we do not understand firstly and then when we understand we do not wish to follow it and not wish to remain sitting at home and the second condition is that he wishes to travel on the secure paths of life and for this aim he desires to become aware of the means and methods to protect himself from the hazards on the journey this matter can also be understood through an example an individual wishes to dive into a river you tell him that the water is very deep here do not jump here you will drown if he wishes to avoid the danger of being drowned he will take advantage of this guidance of yours but if he, if he wishes to dive into the river with the intention of committing suicide then it is irrelevant whether you make him aware of this or not he will jump in without hesitation in fact he will jump at the place where the water is the deepest from this the difference between these two types of journeyers on the path of life becomes clear some reflections on taqwa and human self muttaqin are those who maintain the desire to keep themselves protected from the dangerous abysses on the path and for this they are observant of this guidance which they obtain from this book there are certain things in which if we put some other thing it then remains fully protected these are called preservatives and this is another aspect of taqwa from this root the word waqiatun is derived the pay off of quranic teaching and guidance is the development and growth of the human self in such a way that it can both live life in the world in a correct and balanced way and along with this become so strengthened that it can become capable of traversing the next evolutionary stages of life the life of the hereafter now this is a point to pause and reflect that our life is not going to end with our physical death and we should think very carefully for for a little while maybe for few days that if my life is going to go beyond death that is human self and i have not managed to get the maximum within the time available to me then it means that i will be starting the next life at a lower ladder on this ladder of self development and since whole of self development of the quran firstly deals with human thought so changing or transforming our psyche is the first step on this path so quran is helping us that change your psyche and the rest will follow because once we change our psyche and acquire iman which will be dealt in in the next verse we essentially bring a change within us and once we bring a change within us then that change tells us that you go and meet up with those people who are already on this path so it becomes the requirement of that change which becomes our own proclivity our own desire our own need it is stated in the quran about the human self that and its enlightenment as to its wrong and its right both kinds of possibilities have been kept within it i e the possibility of disintegration that is fujur and also the possibility of becoming protected and strengthened and that is called integration and it all depends on our choice for example now we are going through 
the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, it is our choice to stick to it and it is our choice not to stick to it. And if we stick to it and keep progressing and don't give up, then we will see that after some time there will be a significant tangible change which will take place within our psyche and we will notice it. It is not something otherworldly. Right here in this world, we will notice the change within us. The word taqwa has been used for its remaining protected and strengthened. The meaning of this word becomes further clarified from this. Misconception about piety. Words like taqwa and muttaqeen, etc. frequently appear in the Quran from the beginning till the end. And it has explained with great clarity what the characteristics of muttaqeen are and what the outcomes and fruits of these characteristics are. But among us, the words muttaqi and piety are mentioned together and the meaning of muttaqi itself is taken to mean being pious. And this is the term used within the domain of religions. A very profound concept is contained in this word pious, whether it is the monasticism of Christianity or the Vedant of Hinduism, the temples of the Zoroastrians, or the nirvana of Buddhism, the root ideology of all of these is that the physical world is worthy of rejection. And the one who is engrossed in worldly attractions cannot acquire nearness to God. And over here, God means that concept of God, which is not the Quranic. It is the man-made, the religious uh, concept of God, in which God is taken mostly as a dictator. A basic condition for divine nearness is to distance oneself from these attractions. After Deen became converted into religion, when this same ideology of monasticism arrived among Muslims in the shape of mysticism, according to this concept, they also declared the world and its attractions as worthy of rejection and abandoning them was declared to be a requirement for divine nearness. And we do hear these kind of terms within the religious domain where people say that one should stay away from the material goods and isolate oneself and not to make an enough effort to make a good living in this life. It is from here that the term pious became prevalent among us. This is why you will see that when it is said about some individual that he is very muttaki and pious, like words are also used like saint, holy, and a uh, lot of reverence is given to some individuals who are considered very religious. The picture which emerges in our mind about him is that he distances himself from worldly things which are attractive and alluring and views them with distaste. I put this slide together just to acquaint ourselves that what is going on in the religious world and we should get a glimpse of it in case we are not already aware of it. The book which makes things clear. It is stated in Surah Yunus about Muttaqeen. It is he who has made the sun to be a shining glory and the moon to be a light and measured out stages for it, that you might know the number of years and the count of time. No wise did Allah create this but in truth. Thus does he explain his signs in detail for those who understand. Verily in the alternation of the night and the day and in all that Allah has created in the heavens and the earth are signs for those who have Taqwa. So one of the signs of muttaqeen is that they should have a good grasp of what is going on in the world of nature and they should be fully aware of the importance of time and space and other related things so that they know the importance of their own life and their own creation as physical beings. From this just consider that as far as this material universe is concerned what the status of muttaqeen will be those who reason and reflect on this whole universe and who harness the forces of nature. And that is implicit, that is built into it. Quran puts a lot of emphasis and uh, invites us on, on exploring the outer world, the physical world, the world of sciences. From this, another question will arise that every one of those nations which acquires knowledge of the laws of nature can harness the forces of nature. There is no distinction here either between Mormon and Kafir. Today, atheistic European nations have forged far ahead in this matter. Will these then be called muttaqeen in the terminology of the Quran? Not at all. To think this is wrong. The reason will become clear as we go through some of these slides. 
And the reason for this error is that by deducting the meaning of some verses of the Quran, we try to jump to some conclusion. Because in all these, the development of the self according to the permanent values does not come into it. And second is that all the benefits which people accrue by bringing the forces of nature under their control, they do not keep them open and available for whole of mankind. In fact, they create conflicts and wars through these these advantages which they acquire. The correct procedure for reaching these conclusions is to keep in front all those places in the Quran where this subject matter has been discussed. This is called cross-referencing of verses, that is the Sriful Ayat. Other aspect of becoming muttaqi, the Quran has called human emotions as shaitan when these are in rebellion against Allah's laws by becoming free from the constraints of wahi and has called those people as mu'mineen who spend their life in accordance with the limits defined by wahi. In this connection, it also demonstrates the meaning of taqwa when it states, those who have taqwa, when a thought of evil from shaitan assaults them, bring Allah to remembrance, when lo, they see clearly. And obviously, they only can remember, the, the, they can only check their own thought process if they know what is in the Quran. Mu'mineen are those who never deliberately allow rebe rebellious emotions and desires, which Quran declares as shaitan, to overwhelm them. But if it sometimes ever happens that this kind of wandering thought enters their heart, they immediately bring Allah's laws to mind. As a consequence of this, their eyes are immediately opened and their vision is enlightened through which they recognize that this is an iblisi deception and they immediately shake it off from their field of vision. And it is important because the purification of thoughts is absolutely essential. It is through the purification of thoughts that we can work for the system of deen and we do not let our psyche become contaminated by those value systems which are not in line with the Quran. The Quran states that such people are called muttaqi. From these two verses, at least, this meaning has come before us that muttaqi are those who, having harnessed the forces of nature, utilize them according to Allah's wahi. And that is important point for us to grasp at this stage. And we should keep it in mind all along, as long as we are going through the Quran, to learn, to develop ourselves. That important is that whatever advantages we get by bringing these forces of nature in our control and by acquiring all the means of sustenance, that these have to be utilized for the good of whole of mankind. And to do that, we have to acquire that psyche, that intellect, those desires which work within the permanent values of the Quran. And those can only be, that can only be done through self-development within these permanent values and by making the Quranic teaching part of our psyche. The Quran states that such people are called muttaqi. From these two verses, at least this meaning has come before us that muttaqi are those who, having harnessed the forces of nature, utilize them according to Allah's wahi. And if any thought against it ever arises by chance in their heart, because brain creates thoughts, we should know that, that the brain does create thoughts, whether we like them or not, and then we have to Look at those thoughts and then cancel those thoughts, eliminate those thoughts, not to act on the, those thoughts which do not meet the criteria of the Quran. Because brain is a thought producing machine. Some thoughts arise because of our own, we, own, we ourselves trigger them. But some thoughts do arise without our permission as well. They immediately push it away and rid themselves of it. Such were those dangerous places which were to appear at various junctures on their path. Those who desire and determine to pass through these places carefully and securely are the ones who have been called muttaqi. So it's quite a challenging task to be aware of our own thought process and Quran helps with it. And these things then become easier as we practice those and become aware of it and we keep our loftier aim in front that we are not happy with the man-made system. We want the system of deen to be established in some part of the world. Complete guidance to journey through this life. Based on this, the meaning of these few words of the initial verse of Surah Al-Baqarah is, you had called us and said that you should be given correct guidance to traverse the journey of life. And this is the beauty over here, that whatever Allah has noted in Surah Al-Fatiha, He is 
not relating it to himself now and he's saying that you had gone through those supplications you called us you wanted to follow the path sirat mustaqim you wanted the name of allah and here it is we will now guide you through this process and this procedure of establishing the system of deen you will obtain this guidance in this book which will remove the thorns of doubts and suspicion from your mind and you will also purge the psychological torments and distresses from your hearts and that means we will have to do it ourselves after learning it but only those people will be able to benefit from this guidance who are determined to go on this journey and who desire that by remaining protected from all the dangerous charms along the journey they reach the intended destination and what is our intended destination as far as this life is concerned to work for the system of deen come together and then keep developing ourselves and then wait when the results will manifest of our efforts and second is to be on sirat e mustaqim while going through this struggle for the system of deen which essentially means that we are on sirat e mustaqim and since the life goes beyond death then that is our intended destination which will not end we will be handed over by this first stage over here to our next stage of life now over here what i have done is i have put down the translation of this verse 177 from surah al bakra some aspects of being muttaqi and it brings out some aspects very important aspects of how to become muttaqi of course there is a lot more to it but this verse is quite instructive ليس البر ان تولوا وجوهكم قبل المشرق والمغرب ولكن البر من امن بالله واليوم الاخر والملائكات والكتاب والنبيين واتى المال على حبه ذو القربى والجتام والمساكين وابن السبيل والسائلين وفي الرقاب واقم الصلاه واتى الزكاه والموفون بعهدهم اذا عهدوا والصابرين في الباساء والدراء وحين الباس ulaika allazina sadaqu wa ulaika humul muttaqun it is not bear that you turn your faces towards east and west and bear over here will mean normally it is translated as righteousness or virtue but pandered meaning is that if you want to acquire an expanded a vast consciousness to carry out the work as mu'minin then this will not be achieved if you think that by facing east and west that is the ritualized version of religion you will be able to do it not at all but but it is bir and that is how the quran says that and it's worth looking at its root as well in lugatul quran to have iman in allah and that is very important because allah the correct concept of allah is extremely important for human self development because whatever kind of model we keep in front we become that kind of model and over allah's model over here means all his divine attributes we look at them understand them and those attributes which we can follow and manifest in relation to the system of deen we should follow them and the last day very important because the life hereafter exists it is not there because we wish to have some life in the hereafter and quran has given some outline of the life of the hereafter and this includes the law of requital that is accountability because accountability is the one which helps us to develop ourselves when we become extra aware of our own responsibilities and duties then we make less mistakes we become more alert in life and malaika all those forces whether visible or invisible which help us in living this life are included under malaika and the book of course the quran now and the messengers who brought that book and the most important thing over here is that all these messengers were human beings they followed allah's wahi as they were directed and they followed it willingly and the same should be true of our own self that we being human beings can follow the quran and know where quran says if these these messengers could only follow it nobody else can follow it the whole point of presenting these messengers as models is that we should follow their 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 path because they followed the quran and as human beings so can we 
And then that is another important point which comes here to give willingly of your wealth despite affection for it. And we should keep it in mind that this affection for wealth, this love for wealth is kept within us at a default level. It is not something that we create within ourselves. All human beings who are human beings, they will have this affection for wealth because this is the wealth through which they meet their needs. They have some successes in the physical world. But over here, Quran is saying that you have to go against it in, in, in order to establish the system of deen. And what you should do initially, spend it for it, spend, spend it for your kin, that is the close by relations, for orphans, for the needy, for the wayfarer, for those who ask, and for the ransom of those who are slaves. And that is important because all these people are created by the man-made systems. And when people man-made systems create these and if we are not alive to their presence in in the world around us then essentially we are not looking for guidance it is by looking at these people these equal human beings who are like us who are born like each one of us that we create that desire to do something about them and that is why we do not like the system which creates orphans and needy and we want to go against it we were looking for guidance and now once we come to the Quran and we find the solution to these issues and also we become aware of our own self, our own uh, limitations, of our own strength and our own latent potentials, then we create a desire and a need to follow this path. And this is a beautiful link from here. This is individual over here. And then Quran says, since you will not be able to solve the problems despite sharing your wealth with them, you will think of establishing the system of Salat and Zakat. And both of these are related to the physical needs as well as to human self. And once we get onto this path, Quran says it will not be an easy one because you'll be going against the normal current of the man-made system. The majority will be going in one direction. You will stop and start moving in an opposite direction. But Quran says Allah will help you. His laws will help you to fulfill the contract which you have made. And this is the contract we make if we are seeking this guidance. If we remember verse 911, where Allah says that Allah has made a contract with Mu'mineen that in exchange for their life and possessions, He will help them to establish Jannat in this life and they will get Jannat in the hereafter. And to be firm and patient, they have to be because they can't give it up, they can't expect quick results on this path, it takes time. In pain and suffering, there will be some pain and suffering and adversity and throughout all periods of trial and tribulations. And there will be trials and tribulations on this path, there is no escape from that. In any case, even under man-made system, those people who try to be a bit righteous and try to be a bit good, they also face some kind of trials and tribulations. But over here, once we follow this path, then Allah's help is available to us. That is His laws help us and we know we are being helped. It is not something otherworldly and we will go through these things as we progress through this surah. Such are the people of truth, the muttaqeen. So that was the point. And if we go through this verse in reverse order, all these things, all this process and procedure given over here will indicate to us that what is expected out of this muttaqi and how they should develop their self, how they should change their thinking and what path they should follow. So this is essentially the path of Sarat al mustaqim Thanks for your time and for sharing this today. Please feel free to share it with your contacts. You may like to subscribe for future talks related to the Quranic system of Teen.